Welcome to Comedy by Indie Drop-In. Each week, we feature an episode from the best independent creators. Hit subscribe for more great comedy content. If you would like to support Indie Drop-In and get these episodes ad-free, check out our Patreon at the bottom of the show notes. Today's episode is from The Bureau Boys. Don't forget to check out the show notes for links to subscribe and follow on social media. Enjoy the show. Begin. The Bureau Boys is an improvised detective serial. Every Monday morning, the Bureau Boys solve crimes based on clues sent in by their informants. That's you! Go to thebureauboys.com to submit your clues, informant. This week's clue was sent in by informant Seth. It is application. We see the Bureau boys driving down a long stretch of flat road on their way to an unknown small town in Iowa. But the town is kind of well known because it's been walled off by the surrounding towns. For this town is afflicted by a mysterious circumstance. Detective Riley, I'm trying to drive. Can you... Hmm? I'm trying to drive. That's very distracting. You know, I'm, the, the corn is whipping by on both sides of the car. It's very distracting when you whistle. Why are... Yeah, I, you know, I was going to ask, why are we driving through the cornfield? There was a road back there that we could have been on, but this the, the corn is just whipping past. I can't even keep these windows open. Well, the GPS said turn right, and so I turned right, Detective Riley, and if you see straight ahead of us, you can see the dome shape of the city, village, town. Yeah, the dome rising above the corn stalks, I can just barely make out. I'm glad we're that's a good landmark. I suppose we're headed in the right direction. It's just uh, being in the corn just takes me back to the old days. Whistling Dixie, and I got a little carried away. Uh, but I'm, you know what? You know what, Detective Potter? What? I'm not going to apologize for whistling. That's my God-given right. Okay, fine. And you know that. Fine. You And you know that we have a case to take care of, Detective Riley. Yes, it's the case of the Mondays. Yes, informant Brogers sent this in to us ages ago, and we're finally getting around to it. Because we've, I mean, we've had our hands full, Detective Riley. I'm stressed the hell out. Hey, hey, your veins are bulging. Keep your eyes on the road. There is no road. Keep your eyes fixed on the corn. All right, we got to keep in the state. If we don't, if we veer off into another row of corn, geez, we might end up on the wrong farm, if you know what I mean. I sort of get it. Okay, Detective Riley, you know that the people here have been have been basically held captive because the, every every after every weekend, the people in this town, if you remember, Detective Riley, get super irritable and super angry with each other. There's been incidents of 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 mild violence. There's been people quitting jobs, people firing people, uh, you know, dogs getting spanked on their little dog butts. Yes, yes. And to make matters worse, it seems there's a complete shortage of coffee. No one can get their their caffeine fix. So that's just exacerbated the problems. Yes, and specifically because this city has been walled off. This town's been walled off. All the other towns around this town, because they didn't want these irritable jerks coming into their towns, they walled them off. So these these people, from our understanding, are trapped in their own town by the surrounding towns. I- I'm not really sure who's the bad guy here. Is it the irritable ones trapped inside this walled city, or is it the or is it the surrounding people who walled them in? Is it the creators of fine coffee around the the Columbia? Who have refused to deliver coffee, I think, uh, I think because they were being harassed at the gates. I mean, how would they even be able to get it in other than through the gates, Detective Riley? D- Who's even in charge of the gates? Speaking of gates, the Bureau boys have rolled up to a large iron gate beneath this large domed city. Okay. It looks like this is as far as this old dusty Studebaker's gonna take us. A tiny little hatch slides open in the giant iron door, and a little man pokes his head out. Hey, you two down there! Hey! What? Hey, Detective Potter, there's a the man speaking to us. Hey! Uh, hey, hey! Yeah. Up here! Yeah, My well, eyes yes. are up here! 
Detective Riley, quit looking at the door where his crotch would be. What is wrong with you? Yeah. Just trying to get an understanding of I don't uh, just the anatomy of this tiny uh, cu- human like figure is. Look, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. What's the password? Uh, detective, uh, did you? I didn't see it, Detective Potter. I didn't see a password in the case file. No, there was no password. I, did, I frankly, why do we run into so many places that need passwords to get into? I don't understand the, these gatekeepers these days. Think they're a bunch of trolls. They are trolls. That's the problem with gatekeepers these days. They just act hey, like, who are you calling a troll? All right, little guy. The the password hey, is... Hey, how do you know I'm little? Just because I'm sticking my head out here and I have this high-pitched voice doesn't mean that I'm a little man. I'm six foot four. Prove it. Okay. So the little man's head disappears from behind the hinge. He slides the hinge shut and the huge iron door starts to creak open. Detective Riley, I can't believe that worked. That was brilliant. Yeah, I know. We're going to get in so easily. What an idiot. The little man emerges from behind the door, but the Bureau boys are surprised to see that he is not a little man. He is indeed approximately six foot four, according to the thing, you know, like they have at a 7-Eleven where you can measure a crook when he runs out the door. They have that those markings on beside the door so you can be like, oh, he was about 5'11". Well, this one he stands next to is exactly six foot four. I didn't expect you to actually be the correct size you mentioned. You're goddamn right you didn't expect it. You know what? I haven't had my coffee in 17 years. L- listen, we are detectives from the Bureau. We're trying to help you. We we, we came here on a mission to understand what what's happened to your town. The Bureau? What the hell is the Bureau? We haven't had news come in or out of this town for 17 years. 17 years, Detective Potter. Jeez, they've really been... They've been balled up in here for a long time. Detective Riley, this, th- the amount of time that they haven't had anything in or out of this town is almost old enough to vote. Speaking of, Detective Riley, have you huh, have you yeah. finally put in for your mail-away ballot? Huh? Yeah, I mailed it away. Good. I just sent okay. it away. Listen, I don't want to... I don't want to get in the middle of this domestic argument, but you guys, what are you doing here? Listen, I already told you, we're here to help. My name is Detective Riley. This is my partner, Detective Potter. Hello. And we have heard, thank you, we've heard that there is some serious disturbance uh, in this town, possibly a, a, a virus, some kind of disease, and you need help. And gosh darn, we're here to help. Detective Riley, you're always so rude about this. I'm sorry, sir. What is your name? Yeah, thanks for asking. It's Theodore. Ugh, well, you've got to be kidding me. Another Ted. Th- you cannot be named Ted. Yeah, yeah, I am. I've been named Ted for 17 years. You cannot be 17 years old. You look like a fully grown 34-year-old man. I didn't say I was 17 years old. I said that I've been named Theodore for 17 years. Let me get this straight. It's the 17 years ago. Is that when everything went to shit in this crappy town detective riley you can't you can't talk to these people like that hang on uh so theodore yeah uh 17 years ago was was that when your evil neighbors built these walls around the town yeah yeah exactly that was when these evil neighbors built the, built these walls around the town hold on detective potter ah, god i'm getting a vision oh god oh, i need just gonna give me a second here, Theodore. Uh, yeah. Let me see your detective Riley. Watch what you say here. I just need to see your belly button. What? The belly button, detective Riley. I get where you're going with this. If you can Thanks. see where his belly button is, you'll be able to know who his mother is, because exactly. they at one point were attached. You'll have, of course, see her belly button as well. And then you'll be able to connect the two of them, and we'll find out more information about why this guy's name was changed, or he wasn't named until 17 years ago. It's the naval path to the past. Just like the eyes are the windows to the soul, the navel is the window to your family tree. But I'm going to need you to convince him, because he obviously doesn't like me, and to be frank, I don't like him either. What the? Hey, what the hell is... Sorry, Theodore, Theodore, I'm so sorry about my partner here. You know, he's... 
he's a little bit of a wild card. And if you could just just focus on me, I'm down here. You could just focus on me a little bit. Theater. Yeah, all right, all right, all right. Detective Potter, do a little uh, little science show. Okay, you know, okay, distract yeah, it. yeah. Okay, um, so hey, Theodore, did you know that if you take all of this corn, that you, you this whole city is surrounded by corn. If you take all of this corn, and I assume since you've only been named since, as Detective Riley said, you look like a thirty four year old man. Yeah, that you are old enough to to drink alcohol. Yeah. Okay. Well, Theodore, I don't know if you knew this, but all of this corn that's surrounding you, you can make into alcohol. Yeah. That sounds like something I'd be interested in. As Detective Potter distracts the old, young, friendly, somewhat irritable giant, Detective Riley slowly lifts his shirt and plugs his n- belly button with both his thumbs, transmitting the past through the navel into his mind. <sighs> yeah! Yeah! I don't, I don't remember anything from the past 17 years. And even beyond. Detective Riley, what did you do to him? Got stolen his memories. Oh, no. What happened to your memories? Mine? They're, I think they're in his head. Yeah, I, I remember being raised by wolves, and then my mom taught me some sort of martial arts or something, and then I started studying the stars. Yeah, that's about right. And, uh... Mm. It was 17 years ago when the walls came, when everyone was shouting, screaming, and when we had to defend for ourselves. It was then that we formed the Council of the Weekend, the Weekend Warriors. Detective Riley, I think you've got onto something. Don't say I cracked the case, because I definitely haven't yet. No, no, no. No, we're we're well on the way, though. Hey, Theodore, um, you know, if you want me to show you how to make this uh, that alcohol that I talked about before, if you could run into the, the forest over, or the, the field. The forest, the, the corn forest. The corn forest. Here. That's what they call them, right? The corn forest over there. We, when we came in here, knocked down a lot of ears of corn. If you could gather up, I don't know, 200 to 1,000 ears of corns, I'd be happy to show you how to make that alcohol. Yeah. I think I'd like that, actually. So, Theodore scampers off into the corn, leaving the gate wide open for the Bureau boys to approach. Detective Riley, we, we're, we're in. We're in. That was close. Listen, it seems that there was some, there was some formation of some gangs here. Uh, things got a little out of control, and uh, everyone changed their names after, uh, after the walls came up. Now, did you say that there was another cult involved? Are we... A weekend warrior cult Just, or something. It was a, it was some kind of some kind of uh, council. Okay, uh, I, okay. They might, I think they might be the ones in charge. Okay, I, no cults here. Okay, uh, not that we know of yet. Okay, all right. The Barrow Boys look around the small town of only oh seven hundred and fifty or so people. They see a general store. They see a record store. They see a copy of the matrix for this town has been frozen 17 years in the past from three years ago wait what three years ago and from 17 years prior to that the the town has been frozen you know because of the matrix reference well you could still have a Matrix DVD in a store window three years after the Matrix came out, and technically I would say it's four years after the Matrix came out if we're going to start to split hairs, narrator. Well, was it was it the Reloaded or Revolutions? That's my question. I don't know. I gave up after the first one. All right, fair enough. Seventeen years ago. The Matrix was left there in that store window. I'm just saying this town is frozen in time 17 years ago. With some old-timey references thrown in there, too, like a general store. There's a barrel outside with a bunch of apples in it and a little street urchin pushing a hoop down the street with a stick. And there, laying in the road, is is another stick and a ball. No one's playing stickball anymore. Detective Riley, this is like a almost like a ghost town here. Yeah, like an old Wild Wild West slash 1930s New York slash 2003 Iowa. Ghost town. Yes. Detective Riley, you think they're ghosts in this town? 
Uh, yeah, I no. I got a very strong feeling that there's ghosts. There's ghosts underneath us. There's ghosts to the left and right. There might even be ghosts above. Uh, I'm not sure if they can float that high. Detective Potter pulls out an EKG meter, which appears to be made of an old Zoom MP3 player. He points it at various objects. Detective Riley, I'm not getting any readings on this thing. I don't think there's any paranormal activity in this town at all. Uh, well, we're out in the open. We're going to have to wait till we're in some kind of bar room or back room or billiard room. You mean like that old tavern over there? Detective Potter gestures toward an old tavern with bat wing doors. Now, we got to be careful. These locals don't know us, and as we know, they're very irritable, uh, as we saw from Theodore earlier. Very true. we got to tread lightly. The boys enter the tavern or saloon or bar. As they as they enter, the, they see three older fellows bellied up to the bar, chatting up the old wench, serving them fire water. And the corner, there's a piano player not playing because the piano plays on its own. And just to be clear, the wench seems like a delightful woman. We're just using bar wench in the colloquial term. Yeah. The piano music stops as everyone turns to face the Bureau Boys. Howdy. Who the hell are you guys? Who are ya? Hey, we haven't had any, uh, any, uh, visitors to this saloon slash tavern slash bar since, uh, uh, I don't know. Hey, hey, Frank, when's the last time we had a visitor that wasn't one of us? Ah, must have been nine, eighteen years ago. The Bureau Boys look at Frank. He appears to have a peg leg and an eye patch over his eye. Aye, it's been many moons since a couple of strange city folk stumbled into this bar room. Yeah, Frank, I'd say it's been since, since you've been shipwrecked in this little town. Aye, it was then that... I crashed into this land-loving, corn-growing, slop-schmucking, shuck-jiving... Okay, okay, Frank, you don't need to get all irritable about it. We're all on edge here. Uh, we actually wanted to talk to you guys about that. Everyone seems to be so on edge in this town. And we know that... Well, there must have been some type of event that precipitated this. I, I, I'm sure none of you are happy. Happy? I haven't been happy since I was on the high seas, sailing with my rum, my mates, and me wife. And I haven't been happy since the Great Depression. I sold dust at the time, and everyone needed dust. Death of a dust salesman. Okay, well, we're the Bureau Boys. I No, I'm sorry. I'm no, sorry. don't. You, what are you? Detective Potter, I'm sorry, you might need I'm to sorry. have a sidebar with you right now. Me, yeah, let's have a quick sidebar. Okay, let's have a sidebar. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I feel like ever since we've been into this town, I've been wanting to rip on us. Remember just our last case? I feel like we got all irritable. Yeah. I'm experiencing that irritability right off the bat in this town. Okay, to be fair, we haven't worn any PPE whatsoever since coming in here. We could have been That's exposed true. right away. That's true. If this is an airborne virus. Right, we still don't know what's causing this or where it's coming from. What's origins? That's what we're after now. Okay, my point was I'm sorry about calling us the Bureau Boys. I'll go back to it. Uh, I'm sorry, gentlemen. Uh, this is Detective Riley, and I'm Detective Potter. The Bureau Boys flash plastic badges. The patrons look them up and down and are unimpressed. <laughs> Those are stupid kids. You think? <clears throat> Why are you making fun of me? Frank? Ah, it was just a little literature joke. Don't worry about it. We're still pals and mates, and one day, when my ship is fixed, I'll take you out on the seas. I'll show you the complete opposite of dust. Mud? Uh, hey, boys, if you're not going to drink, get out of here. But if you are, come here, pay up, and I'll tell you a story or two about this here town. The Bureau Boys sidle up to the bar. Detective Potter slaps down his blockbuster card. You can keep it open. Oh my gosh, thank you so much. I can't wait to use it. For in this town, blockbuster still exists. All the patrons now look at the Bureau Boys as 
wealthy royalty. I heard Blockbuster is about to have its own streaming service. Ah, they might even sh- they might even sail movies right to your homestead. I can't wait to see how that movie Old School turns out. Wow, boys, you have your choice of anything on the wall. Uh, I'll just have a prickly pickle. And my partner will just have water. He's driving home. Oh, come on. I can't be trusted behind the wheel. At least you admit it. I drove us through a cornfield, Detective Riley. I think you should drive home. If we make it out of here alive. Just as Detective Potter utters the words alive, the barroom doors swing open. And a dark-coated fellow strides in. The air in the bar is sucked out. His heavy boot steps. Cross the floor directly toward the bureau, boys. The patrons sitting at the bar scatter. The lady behind the bar ducks down. The piano player's mustache twirls up in fear as he dives behind his piano bench. The boys don't seem to notice much of anything different as they sip their cocktail and water. But suddenly, Detective Potter looks up into the back bar's mirror and notices the largish man. He seems to resemble the shape and form of the squeaky-voiced gatekeeper the boys had met earlier. Detective Potter. Yeah. There's a... There's there's a... I see him. Yeah, I I see see every part of him except his face because this mirror, he's so tall. I know, he's just standing there and he's just staring down at us. I'm quite literally shaking in my... Well, if I had boots on, I would be shaking in them. We should have worn boots. Boots in 2003 were all the rage, Detective Riley. We should have known. I'm afraid this might be... I'm afraid this might be the the gatekeeper's Theodore's uh, father. Good, because I can barely remember what Theodore's voice sounded like. I wonder if it'll be as high-pitched as his son. I guess there's only one way to find out. So the boys spin around in their squeaky barroom chairs. Hello, sir. Hello. I'm Detective... Go on. No, D- Detective Potter, that was me. I said hello. Shut up, Detective Riley. I'm oh, I'm so sick of you. Oh, my God. What is your deal? I'm so... I'm just... I'm really sick of you. I'm sick of this. I'm saying, hey, hey, buddy, what do you want? What do you want? Tough guy. Tolly. Hey. Hey, Burly. Hey. Hey, Hightower, hey, what do you want? What do you want? What do you want? Detective Riley looks on in horror and awe as Detective Potter continuously berates this stranger. Detective Riley looks at Detective Potter's now empty cocktail glass. Yo, what what the hell's with this town anyhow? What's with you, buddy? Hey, piano player, fire it up again, okay? Something something non-licensed, please, okay? Hey, bar wench, how about another round for me? And nothing for my buddy here, he's driving. Hey, hey, Slim Jim, hey, hey, Slim Jim. Yeah, you, buddy. Detective Potter points menacingly toward the stranger still standing there, stoic and silent. Yeah, you gonna say something, tough guy? Huh? Detective Potter starts jabbing at his chest. There's a muffled scream from beneath where his chest is. What the? Yeah. Yeah. What? Huh? Hey. Hey, tough guy. Huh? 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 Just then, the tall man looks down at Detective Potter, his eyes rolling to the back of his head, and he falls forward, dead. Detective Potter, you killed him! No, I didn't kill him. Shut up. I didn't kill him. I didn't know such thing. The boys look at the largish man's form. The bottom half of it starts to move as a much smaller man emerges from beneath his blackened coat, holding his eye. Uh, uh, I couldn't take it anymore. That tough suit is so hot. What do you want, short round? Detective Potter, please, what is what is with you? As Detective Potter and Riley start questioning the little man that crawled out of the big man costume. The patrons of the bar return to their seats. The lady behind the bar stands back up to see what's happening, and the piano player's mustache resumes its straight form. I can't believe it! My big man costume! It's ruined! Oh, I get it. I get it, little man. I saw the I saw the help wanted sign outside. You're just here to submit your application for the bar back job, huh? You want it you need to be a big man. You need to be a big grown man to help out the poor barmaid, huh? You you the way you tapped my chest, you hit the little 
spring-loaded detachment mechanism that I built into my mechanist suit, destroying my hard work. I've been terrorizing this town for years. Ah, uh, he has. He's the bully. I had no idea he was just a shrimp in the form of a whale. Yeah, well, that kid, I I see him. I see that old guy. He He's always wandering around in my backyard at night, and it terrifies me, and it used to terrify my late wife. Yeah, he's he's taken... He's been in charge of the town's water supply since, oh, jeez, uh, at least a decade or two. Detective Riley, can I talk to you for a second? Of course. I notice you haven't tasted your water at all. And I notice that my drink is made mostly of water. And why are you looking at me like that? I, I'm just looking at your eyes. You That's how I listen directly, to people. You, I hate you looking directly into my eyes. And when you look directly into my eyes, it really like makes me think, oh, my God, Detective Riley, I could just... I could, I could literally wring your neck Get right now. Get your head off my neck, Okay, please. oh, God, okay, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. God. Oh, God, though, you pissed me off so badly. Uh, just get your thought out. Oh. Uh, I'm just saying, this guy was in charge of the town's water supply. I have clearly had... Detective Riley, just take one sip of your drink, your water, and see what happens. So Detective Riley picks up his drink, examines it, seemingly just a normal glass of water. He takes a sip. Hmm, doesn't taste anything... Out of the ordinary, but suddenly, his mood changes. Detective Riley, okay, I need you to look at this, at this. Look at what? What? Look at what? What do you want me to look at? There's nothing to look at. Uh, Well, if you have the application, then show it to me. Yes, I have an application on my phone that shows you only pictures of happy things. So here, look. Detective Potter pulls out his phone. He opens an application called Happy Puppies. He starts leafing through the pictures of puppies, showing them to Detective Riley one by one. Look, Detective Riley, look how nice these little cute little puppies are. How do you feel? I I feel like I could throw them in the nearest lake and watch them kick and drown. That is dark, Detective Riley. Well, what else you got to show me, huh? You got other pictures on your stupid phone? Jesus, this is an outdated iPhone anyway. What is that, the 4? Upgrade your technology. Hey, boys. I've got a... A little bit of a tip for you. What is it, old fuck? Okay, okay. Listen, if I were half the man I was 17 years ago, I'd take both of you back outside, and I'd knock your stupid heads together, and I'd throw you into the dust, or mud, as my friend suggests. But I'm not. So I'm going to tell you this. 17 years ago, before that guy... The old man gestures toward the man... The old man gestures toward the half-man laying in a trench coat. Before that guy took over our water supply, everything was hunky-dory in this town. We were a regular pleasant fit. And now, since he took over the water supply, everyone's been irritable. Everyone's been pissed off. The other towns walled us off. We haven't been able to get word in or out. The jobs dried up. The town dried up. And we can't get any water from anywhere else. And the water that we use to irrigate the corn outside is from the same water supply. Jesus, old man, do you ever stop talking? Yeah, Jesus Christ, you fucking ramble on, on, and on, and on, yak, 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 yak. Detective Potter, <laughs> shut up, Go old on. man. You no, can... not you. Shut it. Shut your old trapper, clapper. <laughs> Detective Potter. I'm so pissed right now. This guy just basically laid out the whole case for us. I literally can't even look into your face because I'm so mad at that guy. However, as detectives, Detective Riley, I know you're a shitty detective and I'm a good detective. But I know you're a piece of shit detective and I'm the best detective that's ever walked this goddamn earth. The bureau boys slap each other in the face a bunch of times. Ah, ah mateys, break it up. Break it up. As the, uh, you, you, you'll, you'll get over it. You'll get over it. Detective Riley, what do we do next? What's your stupid idea for what we do next? Well, it's obvious. We've got to arrest that man. As Detective Riley points to the man in question, the little man who was walking around in a large big man suit, they both, both detectives realize that the little man has escaped. 
God damn it, Detective Riley. You do this every single time. How many times did we let let William what Bradford the third escape until you were like, hey, maybe we should pay attention. When we have literally a suspect in the room, maybe we should pay attention to where he is. Maybe we shouldn't let him like sneak up behind us and shoot us in the backs and all that kind of stuff. Detective hey, Riley, we- if you weren't busy me showing stupid pictures of drownable puppies on your phone, I could have had this case wrapped up in two shakes of a corn husk. Boys, 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 bureau boys, listen, listen, here's the secret to surviving in this town. Why do you think Frank and I get along so well? I we're mates after all. Here's what you have to do, boys. You can't drink the water. The water has to be distilled. You're only allowed to drink alcohol. And don't drink tequila, because that'll make you just as angry as you were, as you otherwise would have been if you'd been drinking the town's water. Detective Riley, I'm not, I'm not really a big drinker. Well, we're going to have to start, you pussy, because the only way, if, the only way to catch a criminal in this town is to be drunk. Ain't that right, bar lady? Yeah, that's about right. We've been so afraid of the water commissioner, as we know him, for so long. Because he's such a towering figure. And and he's the meanest of them all when, when you really get him going. But, oh my goodness, I've never... I had no idea he was just a little man in there. Otherwise, geez, we would have all just trampled on him years ago. Detective Potter holds up two fingers. The barkeep slides across two moonshines made of alcohol from the corn outside. The bureau boys clink their glasses together and down the moonshine. We're gonna need more than that. Will the bureau boys be able to solve the case of the Mondays? Will they be able to catch up to the little man impersonating a big man who's apparently tampering with the town's water supply? How will the bureau boys tolerance for alcohol affect this case. And what's the name of this town anyway? Come back after the break to find out. And don't forget to subscribe on your favorite podcatcher. The second clue for this case is brought to you by Informant Janie. It is advertising the bureau boys find themselves three bottles into the afternoon as they were warned by the old man at the bar that they need to drink alcohol to prevent their irritability which is generally the opposite of why people drink alcohol it would seem that the only way to be well in this town is to be drunk. And it would also seem that the only way to be well is to avoid water from the well. Bingo, narrator. Detective, yeah, I don't know if I've ever, I don't know if I've ever told you this, but like, honestly, I'm a little bit jealous of like how you are. Like, sometimes like I'm like, oh, like, look at his beard. Look at his beard. His beard is so... Like, your beard is, like, like, I, I'm not, like, I'm I legit, I'm not, like, just saying that, like, your beard is, like, epic. It's, like, an epic, like, it's, like, the Iliad, honestly, is your beard. I'm going to start calling your beard the Iliad. <laughs> Detective Pata gives Detective Riley's beard a good tug. Oh, hey, Santa. Uh, hey, Santa mm, Claus. Mm, mm. It's- Hey, thank you, thank thank you for the appreciation. <laughs> I, said, I I I'm not, I can't come on. I'm not a Homer care. I can't match up the Iliad. Jeez, uh, that's big shoes to fill. You know, uh, speaking of big and shoes, you've got the man. Your feet, those those shoes you wear, just so big, and your body, the muscles. I can't. How could I ever? Look, <laughs> work up, work out, work up to those big old brawn shoulders of yours. Thanks so much, Detective Riley. Like honestly, to be honest, though, like maybe you the discipline. Ah, you know, oh, I mean, God. But like honestly, like maybe you just think that like my feet are are bigger because like you kind of sound a little bit Canadian when you're drunk and like the conversion. 
and like the conversion from like Canadian units to like United States units is like so it just makes it sort of like seem a little bit like different you know what I'm saying yeah 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 I do I do know what you're saying I know what you're all about there hey detective uh detective Potter a uh you notice the bottle here uh, it says here it says uh the name of the liquor you notice it's the the commissioner's booze are you talking about the water commissioner like the guy i just like poked in the eye or whatever to the guy that you poked in the chest and you made his suit fall apart yeah but it revealing- was two guys so i feel like i poked the guy the guy that was the other guy in the show oh you think that's hot no no because it was oh. there's a there's a can Miss, um, hey, uh, bar lady. Uh, yeah, boys, do you need another, another bottle? I guess we'll take one for the road. Yeah, you'll definitely take another one. And please don't call us hosers, okay? Don't. Don't, because we're not. We're not. Yeah, um, was there something else you wanted besides the bottle? I, uh, yeah, the, who, who's, who owns the liquor? The, 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 dis- the liquor yeah, like the, and who's doing the distilling of like the corn? The dis- like who's making the corn? Who? Okay. Who? Who is making the corn from delicious like picnic snack into like delicious? Oh my god! I am gonna call in sick tomorrow. Snack drink. You know? Do you know what I'm saying? Hey, barkeep. Yeah. Um, yeah. What's your What's your name? What's your name? Hey, what's your name? It's Wendy. Wendy, what's up? Hey, Wendy. Does anyone ever? Does anyone ever be like, hey, Wendy? Can I have it my way? I want to have it my way. Wendy. Yeah, he's yeah, because when he gets a, the drink, he's having it his way. You know, because you know it. Did you get it there, Wendy? Did you? Hey, Wendy. Oh, here's my card. This. Hey. I'll. I'm gonna keep. See, I'm taking your card. I'm gonna keep it real safe. Unbeknownst to Detective Pada, Wendy places the card behind her back, promptly drops it on the floor, never to be picked up again. Oh yeah, yeah. You call me if there's any new things that ever happen in the Thank case or whatever. You. Thank you. Like a background see, check on that guy that applied for the job. Listen, if you want like a background check, I can get a background check on him. To answer your question, the commissioner him and his son run a distillery business for this town and and obviously he's also the commissioner of the water hold hold on detective riley was who was the water commissioner again it was the little guy that uh was it was a little guy he we you know because you pressed the his suit button that that disabled his suit it all fell apart and the little guy was there had the same squeaky voice was that yeah. st- was that today? It was. Um, I think it, we've been here for we've been bar lady. We've been here for what two two three days now. The barrel boys look at the clock above the bar. It's been twenty five minutes. The bar lady doesn't even bother to answer. For the bureau boys are just in their own world. He, uh, these whippersnappers these days they can't hold their liquor at all. Aye, one day on the sea and I'd have them rumbling and tumbling right off the edge of the North Shore, if you know what I mean. I don't, but whatever. Hey, Detective Riley, I just wanted to say, though, like, I know I felt like I was, like, acting, like, a little bit annoyed with you earlier, um, but, like, now I'm, like, I'm good. Like, we're good. We're good, right? Like, we're good with each other, you know? Detective Riley and Detective Potter are speaking with their noses touching in, mere inches away from being a bona fide couple. Like I want you to look me right in my eyes and you tell me that we're good. Yeah. We're all that. This is what that. This is that. All of this is that. It's been all about our friendship, Detective Riley. You know, like I want it. I want to hear from you. Okay. Yeah, we're gonna. We're gonna. I'm feeling the love here, Detective Butter, and I don't want it to ever stop. So, so. We should, we should do we came to do a couple of days ago and solve this case. Detective Potter looks at the bottle that the barkeep has handed him. Did you really, like? I'm noticing like on this bottle, there's this um, sorry, there's like this little um, 
like a uh, address on the back of it where this wine, this this the wine moonshine, whatever this is, is like made. Yeah, yeah. Do you want to? Like, let's yeah, it, let's it, let's it, let's 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 go. So the bureau boys, with the bottle in hand, walk through the bat wing doors with their arms around each other's shoulders, singing a drinking song. Farewell, energy to my fist. Not necessarily the same song. The Bureau Boys walk up the dusty street. At the end of the block is the address on the bottle. I think the distillery is right in front of our faces. Yeah, I think like... Like the zoning in this in this town, Detective Riley kind of sucks a little bit. It's like Houston. Hey, D- D- Detective Potter, I'm getting a. You know, I took uh, the memories of the gatekeeper. <gasps> you remember? Oh my God, that's right. That's right. You should look at your uh, memories. Uh, we yeah. So I'm getting a. I'm getting a vision. It's pretty fuzzy, but. Uh, I'm seeing some dumping something into a big old vat, uh, something else, you know, like a liquid, but it's also a uh, solid and mixing it all up. Like a slurry? It's slurry, like a slushy. Oh, I could go for a oh slushy. Oh my god, we should right get slushies. Now. Oh my god, and those hot dogs that they have on the roller. Uh, Do you think they have a 7 Eleven in this town? Probably not. So the Bureau Boys, stand there. Wobbling. Not sure if they should go hunting for a quick snack or enter the distillery in front of them when suddenly they see the gatekeeper, Theodore, from before, marching towards the distillery, hands full of corn. Theo. Hey. Theo. Theo. Theo, Theo come here for a sec. Theo, come, come here for a sec. Come we here. gotta talk. We wanna talk. We just wanna talk. We won't have any guns. We just wanna talk for a second. We have guns, though, right? To take yeah, I have my guns. Shh. Don't, Shh. don't tell. Don't tell. Don't, don't, don't tell we have guns. I have your gun, too. I took it at the bar because I knew you'd been drinking. I'm not a good shot anyway. I'm more of a hand-to-hand. Yeah, I know. You're. Yeah, I know. That's why I have two guns now and you have no guns. But... I did leave you all the bullets. You know, I throw because I'm good at the throw because I'm a dart player. Theodore looks confused at the two bureau boys. Theo, you got the corn. Looks like you're going into the distillery. Hey, did we meet your dad? Hey, is your dad tiny? Yeah, what? Hey, what? How did you guys? What are you? Are you guys drunk? We're not drunk. Yeah, drunk. Well, you're you're drunk. drunk. You're the drunkest drunk I ever drunk in my life, okay, Theodore? You're a drunk child. I'm not drunk. I'm not drunk. Look, I got chores to run. If you guys want to do a little walk and talk and follow me around on my chores, then so be it. But you got a warrant? Theo, we don't need warrants. We're from the Bureau. Your dad's a warrant. Our, we are the warrant. And we're going to, you said earlier, you, you were going to make some liquor. Detective Potter here, he's my best friend. He's my best we're friend. We're literally best friends. Like, we've been best friends since birth. We just didn't know it. We've been so, so tight. He told you he, he was going to show you how to make liquor. But you know what? You know what I think? I think you already knew. Huh? What? What? He, he, Detective Potter, I'm gonna lay down my theory. Go ahead, Detective. Right? Like I, honestly, like one of my favorite things is when you lay down theories. Like I, I know I, I kind of like are like gruff about it, but like one of my literal favorite things is listening. to You just like lay out a theory. It's like cracks me. I'm yeah, I'm lay like, it cool. Down. All right, the, cool. The, Theo, I have your memories, okay, and you're not going to get them back without a fight. That's one. Number two is I know I, you and your – we met a small man earlier who was pretending to be a big man, and you both have a similar voice, and here's my theory. I think you're the son of the little man. I think your dad's been poisoning the, wa- the water – and I think you're selling the liquor as a as a temporary cure 
and you guys have been raking in the big bucks. As Detective Riley says these last words, Theodore gasps. <sighs> he throws the two ears of corns at the bureau boys, who are too drunk to dodge them. They get hit in the faces. But it's just ears of corn, so it's not like they get knocked out or anything. They're completely fine. But they do get a tiny rash from the scraping of the corn husks. And they also do get a little bit sobered up, which makes them a little bit angrier, as we established. Hey, <sighs> what the hell, Theodore? <laughs> you little what was that? Punk? Big punk? Yeah, yeah, little big punk. What was that all about? I'll tell you. I'll tell you what it's all about. Listen, my dad, my dad used to run this town. You think my dad was always water commissioner? No, no, he wasn't. He wasn't. 18 years ago, my dad was mayor of this goddamn town. He was mayor. Mayor of this town, okay? And then he got, he, he got caught, you know, maybe doing something a little bit odd with that, you know, that kind of piratey guy at the bar? Yeah, uh, I he, remember, and I well, also... Go on. Well... He, 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 and him. Because I have access to, to your memories, they're still pretty fuzzy. But I think I get the gist. There was a little uh, pirate play. Yeah, pirates of Penzance. I know. And the town doesn't take too kindly to two men in a play, if you know what I mean. No, they don't. But there, there aren't a whole lot of women in this town. There's, and there's only if you take that segment of the population and figure out how many of them can actually act, you got only a small pool of people to pick from. So a lot of the lady parts go to the guys. It's kind of like a real Monty Python or Shakespeare situation we got in here. So we wanted to put on Pirates of Penzance. But my dad, my dad, he had to play the lady part from Pirates of Penzance. And he was mayor. And this town... Look, I grew up in this town and I love this town, but this town is not what you call a tolerant town. They don't understand. They don't understand that love is love. They don't understand that people are people. They don't understand that actors are just playing parts. Like, they don't understand anything, really. As Theodore is explaining the sordid past of his father and the pirate, the same pirate that the Bureau Boys met earlier, Saddles up behind them, mid-conversation. Ah, he's... he's right. The town's a bunch of bigots. And they don't know the love that one man has for the stage and other men. Don't you guys think that maybe if you would just focus on this amazing love between the former mayor or the current water commissioner and... Whoever played the other part in Pirates of Penzance, don't you think that you guys could get past being such a bunch of grumbly gusses? You don't need some sort of coalition of the weekend. You don't need some sort of big sweeping generalization. You don't need alcohol. You don't need all these things in your lives. You just need to focus on the fact that people are just people and you guys can just get along. Because we're all the same, really. We all bleed red. When Detective Potter says they all bleed red, he pulls a tiny little knife from his pocket and slices his own palm for some reason to show that he bleeds red. He grabs Detective Riley's hand and slices his palm. He presses the two together in a blood brother's oath. See? We all bleed the same way. Sorry, Detective Riley, to illustrate that point so graphically. Uh, uh, we're blood brothers now. You're goddamn right. There's nothing that can stand in between us. Not even the... Look over there! Just then, the, the tiny man that was wearing the big man suit comes strolling out of the distillery, followed by a gang, the Weekend Warriors. As they get closer, they begin snapping their fingers and moving in synchronicity. Detective Potter hands Detective Riley back his gun. Detective Riley hands Detective Potter half of his bullets. 
They start to gear up for a massacre. But just then, Theodore speaks. Hey, listen. Listen, guys. Hey. Everyone cool it, okay? Listen. My dad used to be mayor of this town. and He used to be sheriff before that. Before you elected him mayor. You guys remember that? The crowd grumbles their assent. You remember how we didn't have any problems? We didn't have any problems, frankly, you guys, until... Well, until the Matrix came out. And once the Matrix came out, you guys were all fighting over the one HD DVD copy that we had in the general store. And I feel like maybe it wasn't the water that's been affecting us this whole time. Maybe it's just been resentment and intolerance and hate. The townspeople grumble at each other. Well, son, that's a nice theory. But this town owes me. And that's why I've been pumping them full of our liquor, the commissioner's booze. And I've made a tidy profit. And good for me. I deserved it, after all I've done for this godforsaken town. Once they found out that me and the pirate were... were... Panning each other's peters? Walking each other's planks? Swabbing each other's decks? Hauling each other's keels? All right, enough of it. After the town found out, I was demoted. To water commissioner. Do you know how humiliating that is for a former mayor, former sheriff? He's right. He, he, Dad was never the same after that. All right. So the Matrix had something to do with it. Sure. But also, I poured my bits of hate for this town into the water supply. I've been bathing in the water for 18 years, stewing in my own hatred and anger. For the way I was treated. Detective Potter looks at the bottle that led the Bureau boys to this distillery. Detective Riley, the name of this moonshine is Hate Juice. Detective Riley, this has all just been just sort of some advertising scam. He made an entire town angry. Angry with through the water and the only prescription, the solution, was the liquor that he was also engineering. This is, honestly, Detective Riley, just some sort of big marketing ploy. You you can't accuse my dad of that. Can't he? Your dad's been corrupt since, oh God, since I've known him, since he was a boy. Ah, and ever since he took his revenge on this town, I've been sidled up to that bar talking to this old kook. Because me and him, well, we've never seen eye to eye patch ever since. I'm not a kook. The old man smears mud over his face for no reason. Mayor, if I may call you that, that's how I've always thought of you. Come home. Come back to the ship. Yeah. Get. Come Sorry. back. Shut up, boy. I'm having a heart to heart with your dad. Put all this foolishness behind you. Leave this town alone. Hey, Dad? 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 Yeah, what is it? Maybe it's time to let go. Maybe it's time to let me run for water commissioner or mayor or sheriff or all of those things. I am 34. I'm of age to be elected. I just want to be accepted in this damn town. That's why I invented my big mean character. What if I gave you a spot in my cabinet, Dad? Well, I am pretty old. And it's been a while since I felt the tender touch of a pirate. I'm in a political position, Dad, but you can definitely have your relationship still. Well, if I, if I have a position, I get a, my own private room, my own private fuck room, son. So build that into your plans. That's fine. Do, hey, can we have an ad hoc ballot right now, everyone? Can we? I know it's not an election year, but do you think we can just agree to oust the old mayor and vote me in? The crowd grumbles their approval. Well, seeing as there hasn't really been a proper mayor in this town for 17 years, I suppose, son, you have been guarding the gate like a champ. Thanks, Dad. The warriors here have spoken. 
and the rest of the town, they're drunk, so I'm sure they won't mind. My first order of business is, as new mayor is going to be to tear down all these walls around us. We have to get coffee back into this town. We have to flood this town with coffee. I know we all think alcohol is the answer, but I think the answer is inside all of us. I think if we would just get some better sleep and maybe just stop letting those little things get to us and maybe be more accepting, be more accepting of of roles and be more accepting of actors and people of different colors and creeds and races. Unbeknownst to Theodore, the rest of the town has begun gathering in the street as they've heard the large commotion. They're all watching on, seeing what's going to happen next, knowing full well that they were the bigots. And maybe if we have a tram system around the town so we can reduce our carbon footprint, maybe if we maybe if we have elections every every year so people aren't locked in and so we don't have lame ducks and so people have to stay accountable for things and 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 maybe if we actually had an outreach program for the towns around us and we cooperated on things that we would import and export we have all this corn around us that we're not using all of it the town looks at each other looks around considering their options i just want to remind you all that You've already ad hoc elected me, so you don't have options, so everyone get to work in tearing down these walls. Being a little drunk and feeling compelled by their adherence to the newest authority figure in town, the townspeople disperse and begin tearing down those walls. The Bureau Boys look at one another, nod their assent. And do the same, helping the town tear down the walls. Detective Potter, it seems this whole case is, there's some, a gay relationship. The town didn't like him. Then he was found out, when the mayor was found out to be gay, he was demoted. Yes. He poisoned the water to make people angry so that he could sell them his liquor, which made them happier. And he invented a false character to walk around town and bullying people who bullied him for being gay. Is that... Am I getting all this right? I honestly, Detective Riley, I think you nailed it with that summary. I feel like not only have the people of this town learned a valuable lesson about acceptance and tolerance, but I feel like I've learned a lesson about intolerance. And by the way, as my first edict, as mayor, other than tearing down the wall, we're going to do Shakespeare in the Park every Saturday. And we're going to have... Only the qualified women do roles that women should play, but the rest of the roles are going to go merit-based. If a man is the best person to play a woman, then a man's going to get the part. If a woman is the best person to play a man, a woman is going to get the part. If a child should play a dog, if a dog should play a man, we're going to open up casting to everyone. And from that day forward, this small town in Iowa grew to become the playhouse of the world, setting a new standard for stages across the globe and their hiring practices. Except, of course, for the Globe Theater, who had already set that standard. The Bureau Boys, after having solved another case, got back in their Studebaker with Detective Riley behind the wheel... And drove off into the corn. As the car peeled away, you saw in the trunk a couple of cases of that moonshine that they loved so much. If you enjoyed this episode, help the Bureau Boys solve this case by submitting your clue at thebureauboys.com. They may use it on a future episode. While you're there, why not join their informant network and tell all your friends and family to join too? But don't tell the criminals, because the Bureau Boys are coming for them. Thanks again for listening to Comedy by Indie Drop-In. If you would like your show featured, reach out to us at Indie Drop-In on all social media or go to IndieDropIn.com. See you next time.